It's Tarantula Tuesday. Serratogyrus darlingi, known also by the common name rear horn baboon, is an old world fossorial species known for its unique curved foveal horn. This species is endemic to the African countries of Botswana, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, and South Africa. A fossorial species means that the spider is an obligate burrower and makes its home in deep burrows it digs and spends a lot of time hidden in its extensive underground tunnels. This is commonly referred to as a pet hole. C. darlingi is also known as being a prolific webber, especially if you don't provide enough deep substrate for it to burrow in, and will quickly web up the area all around its burrow in the most beautiful manner. This is a fast-growing species that grows from around half an inch to nearly four inches within two years, with most of that growth taking place within the first year. Females of the species can grow up to five inches and live about 10 to 12 years, with some even claiming as long as 15 years. Males, of course, don't grow nearly as large as the females, mature around two years, and usually don't live longer than three or four years. Being an old world tarantula from the eastern hemisphere, this species does not have urticating hairs and relies mainly on its fangs and powerful venom for defense. No reliable and in-depth scientific studies have been done on the effects of their venom on humans, but symptoms have included muscle pain, headaches, and nausea. It is not something I would recommend going through, so avoid handling this tarantula and be mindful when interacting with it. Husbandry for this species is pretty straightforward. Because they are fossorial, they require more depth in their enclosure than your basic terrestrial setup. As slings, I use a large dram vial or a tall acrylic enclosure and fill it at least two-thirds up with the substrate. And I keep the substrate slightly moist as slings so they don't dry out. This is also known as desiccation. I will drop water on its webbing every few days to ensure it has access to water if it needs a drink. But I don't miss their enclosure. I use the same setup for juveniles, just with a larger acrylic enclosure, and provide them with a small water dish I keep full with clean water. As adults, I provide them with a 5-gallon enclosure and fill it over halfway, if not two-thirds of the way up with substrate. You want to provide them with plenty of room to burrow. If you do not give them enough substrate to make their burrow, they will web up the entrance of their burrow even more excessively than usual and spread their webbing throughout the enclosure. Now this may look cool, but it needlessly stresses out your tea. So be a cool kid and let that spider dig. I provide a water dish and a few plants or objects near its burrow for it to use as anchor points for its webbing, but there is really no need to provide a hide for this species. I keep their substrate dry and occasionally overflow their water dish to dampen the substrate on one side of their enclosure. I keep my rear horn baboons at the same room temperature I keep most of my spiders. If you're comfortable, they're comfortable. This tea is a powerhouse when it comes to eating. Even as slings, they quickly pounce on their prey and have an amazing feeding response, only refusing food while in pre-molt. As slings, I feed my sea darlingi pre-killed small crickets or roaches twice a week until they refuse food, and I'm sure to remove any uneaten prey within 24 hours. As juveniles, I feed them two or three medium crickets once a week, sometimes twice a week depending on the size of their abdomen. And as adults, I will feed them three or four large crickets a week, more or less depending again on the size of their abdomen. And again, I always make sure to remove any uneaten prey or leftover pieces of prey within 24 hours. And I wait about 10 days after a molt before attempting to feed them again. This isn't the most colorful species of tarantula out there, but what it lacks in bright color, it makes up with that truly unique appearance. This tea is usually considered a pet hole, especially when younger. But my adult female spends a fair amount of time just outside her burrow when she begins looking for a meal, though I have never seen her venture very far. I am lucky that mine will usually come out of hiding to eat, but once she has had her fill, she will quickly retreat to the safety of her hole. Overall, this is an easy species to care for, but they can be very defensive and quick, and being an old world baboon species, this may not be an ideal first tarantula. But once you have some experience and confidence under your belt, this will make an awesome addition to your collection. What's up Tarantula Collective? My name is Richard. I'm so glad you're watching this video today. That is a truly unique tarantula. Now don't get it confused with the C. marshalli, which has the horn that sticks straight up and down, or the newly discovered C. etonotifer, which is the tarantula they just discovered in Angola that has the really long horn. 
As you can see behind me, I got the new shelf set up. We've got a couple of Eastern King Snakes back there. I got a male and a female, and also a baby milk snake, as well as a day gecko, a tree frog, and a couple other tarantulas. Now, if you'd like to see me do a tour of all the different species of tarantulas and, and reptiles that I have down here in the basement, be sure to hit that like button. Let me know that's something you'd like to see. You know, my sea darlingi is not as aggressive as I've heard a lot of other people's are, and I think that might have something to do with the fact that I provide it with plenty of substrate to burrow in. I think providing it uh, an enclosure that's the most suitable for the tarantula seems to keep them a little more calm. Now, if you've got a favorite fissorial tarantula, be sure to leave that down below in the comments. I'm very curious as to what everyone else's favorite fissorial teas are, because there's a lot of really cool ones out there. And I don't think fissorials get nearly as much love, especially on YouTube, as some of the other tarantulas. Oh, my Panfabetas is actually taking a drink of water right now. Let me get a quick video of that. That's pretty cool. Oh, and there's a snake sticking its head out. Let's get a video of that. Oh, that's pretty exciting. Looks like it's shedding her skin right now. Well, I want to thank you all for joining me today. It's always great seeing you guys leaving comments down below. And if you'd like to see content like this in the future, because I'll be uploading a new video every Tuesday covering a different species as far as care and husbandry and things of that nature, as well as sprinkling in some other little random top 10 lists and do-it-yourself videos and collection tour, things like that, hit that subscribe button so you're always in the know when I'm uploading new videos. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We got a Reddit set up. There's all kinds of different places you can find the Tarantula Collective. We've even got a blog over on Tumblr. So whatever social media you're on, I'm I'm sure you'll find the Tarantula Collective there. And if you want to support this channel, I've got some affiliate links down below, as well as a link to our Patreon. If you're a member there, you get early access to the videos I upload to YouTube, as well as uh, some special limited edition stickers, and there'll be some other cool things coming for our Patreon supporters in the near future as well. The website, thetarantulacollective.com, is just days away from being launched, so be sure to keep an eye out for that. The new issue of the Spinneret Magazine is out. If you haven't read that yet, you're missing out. It's a very cool issue. I'll be sure to leave a link down below in the description. So definitely check it out. And if you haven't already, be sure to join our Facebook group because all of our members get 10% off their purchases from Fear Not Tarantulas. And there's going to be some other really cool benefits coming very soon. Well, thank you guys for all your support and kind words. It really means a lot to me. Well, as always, it's been great hanging out with you guys. I appreciate you watching and I will see you next Tuesday.